Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I want to introduce you to another mini-series that I'm working on, and this is a building guide series. Today, we're going to be talking about building drones, but not any sort of drones. We're going to be talking about building cost-effective drones that we can mass-produce and have a level of both usefulness as well as intimidation factor. Now, before we actually have a look at the drone that I built before and we cut it apart and we build a new one, let's have a look at what sort of blocks we're going to need or that are the most important in this particular design. So first off, in all ships, your gyroscopes, make sure you put them in or we won't be turning at all. Then we've got the reactor, we need to keep this thing powered, but we don't want to overfill the reactor because then we provide the enemy a source of fuel. We also have then the antenna, that is very important so we can connect to it and control it from a distance as well as the actual remote control block. This allows us to set it to waypoint as well as control it manually if we have to. Now moving over to the thrusters. Now the thrusters is really going to depend on where you want this drone to operate. Now if you ask me, I would specify your drone for a particular environment. If you want it to operate in space, equip it with the correct thrusters rather than trying to equip it with everything or hydrogen thrusters because it's just going to become far too costly to be sending these guys out in hordes to get them bumped off and my strategy with the cheap and effective drones is hordes you've got to build a lot of them for them to actually cause any damage to the enemy so let's have a look so first off let's talk about the intimidation factor of the drone itself now the more human like you make it the scarier that players will find it so you can see we've actually got the two gatling turrets on either side acting as arms and we've got the laser antenna that double the sort of purposes so we control it by another laser antenna if we lose connection to the antenna here but it also focuses as like a head and it's quite scary to actually look at. Now as we come a little bit further down, we've actually got a cut down wheel block that is acting as a kind of protection to the actual antenna and the remote control block down there. But my recommendation is actually put these sort of blocks at the back. This is kind of more of a stylish looking drone. So you can tuck them behind here at the rear and you can see I've actually added some rear armored blocks there to protect the reactor in the center. And that's one of the most important parts of your reactor because if your drone loses power its weapon systems are useless if it loses for instance its antenna connection it'll continue on the path that you've set on the remote control block if it loses the remote control block it will then stop moving but it'll still be an adequate threat if it sits, it sits all still now you're probably wondering about scripts, what do I think of them? Then scripts do have a point when it comes to build drone building, but the only issue with them is they tend to be unreliable and they break a hell of a lot. You could be working them with one scenario, you spawn them in the next, and then you've got a drone that lo no longer functions. The best way of using drones is with the GPS frequencies. You can send them out to various different locations, plan ahead, use a recon ship, and you can get your drones arriving in masses. So let's break this drone down and actually have a look at it. So if we take off this front layer of armor, so this layer of armor is doing two things, it's protecting the turrets that tend to get focused um, the majority of time by other enemy turrets and we've got this wheel here that kind of disguises the actual, um, so you can see the reactors, not the reactor but the remote control block and the antenna. So as we continue cutting back you can see that we've got the thrusters as well as this large armored panel here. So this sort of oval armored panel, if we pop that off, is actually protecting the reactor with the inside. And in this case, I've gone with a larger reactor because it is just far superior when it comes to power. It allows the drones to move faster, quicker, and support them under a heavier load like this. And you can see, I've also added a backup reactor in there as well. Now that's not totally necessary, but sometimes it is very useful just to power the thing up with if you stick it on like that. So there's a few different options. Let's have a go at building our own drone though. So we're gonna first, first start with a very basic template. I like to build my drones around either the weapons or a sort of head looking item like the laser antenna. So it, it kind of has a scary look to it. So for this particular design, we're going to build a rocket turret. So let's actually have a look here. So if we go to turrets and we find ourselves the missile turrets, let's actually have a look what we've got here. We could do two on either side that I think is probably the most effective way or we could do one on top and bottom that I think is less effective because if the drone target is below it on a planet's surface it's going to have some problems. So let's try making a very very thin and compact design. So to do this very thin and compact design we're going to try to keep it within a three block radius so this is going to be very very difficult but it should be interesting. So we're going to get ourselves some light armor blocks here and here and then we're gonna add our symmetry mode on, so it'll copy it to each side, and then we need to work on our reactor pack. So we're gonna have to fill these reactors up with some sort of uranium, uh, so we're gonna have to make them exposed, and three little reactors 
like that should be perfect for the task at hand. Now, don't forget the gyroscopes. So to get the gyroscopes in there, we're going to stick them underneath there. So we're just going to go with two gyroscopes. Always best to go with some form of redundancy. But if you don't have the components, don't worry. One will do. So there is two gyroscopes going in the design itself. Then we can get the second missile launcher as we're building this and it's at about this point probably when you want to fill up them reactors so you can see we've already got a much more compact drone type design now we could add the head on the top so in this case we're building it a more compact version of that particular one but what would actually be really nasty here is if we really maximize the missile turret so let's actually search rockets and we actually had rocket turrets on either side as well as missile pods on the top so we filled them reactors up so we can actually cover them up now so that's not a big issue. If we we're going to mass produce this, we'd have to have an alternative, maybe a little cap coming out the back. Let's do it so we could mass produce it. So we're going to get some conveyors in here and make sure the conveyors are all hooked up. It just, it's a little bit problematic the way that we've actually put them guys in there, but it's probably the most protected way of doing it. And if we have a little cargo container on the back there, that allows us to store a few things as well as hook them up so that's what we've got so far now we can start adding the missile or rocket turrets that we wanted to do before so we can get an even more deadlier weapon and let's have a look what we got there so there's one missile turret added just make sure we've got it the bloody right way around yes we have that's an often mistake Aaron tends to make and then we're going to stick one down here as well and it also automatic automatically looks like this guy's moving so now we've got the difficult part We've got a really compact design, but we don't have any thrusters within there. We also don't have a remote control block, so we've got quite a few things to add, and we've got a very compact package to actually do it in. So this is where we start having to get creative. So let's have a look. We've got a slight sort of drift, and since this is going to be an atmospheric one, let's go to our atmospheric thrusters straight away. And we don't really want to block the weapons too much. But something like that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So we've got ones that are going sideways at the minute. And instead of having them there, since it's going to be a forward attack drone, let's put them on the rear. And then we're looking for a system, maybe something like that. I'm not liking that, though. Let's try putting them forward ones like that. Let's put them forward ones down there. And then these can act as a little bit of protection as well. And then let's go into our armoured blocks. And for this particular one, if we want it to last a little bit longer, I always recommend going with heavy armour. And since we're in space, heavy armour doesn't really cost us too much manoeuvrability. So we've got them on there. We've got the side thrusters. We've got up and down. Um, we do, we're doing really quite well for the minute. So we've got the side, we've got the up and down thrusters. We could always have some redundancy type thrusters in here if we wanted to. So let's actually tuck that butt in there and get ourselves some more half blocks cooking so these little half blocks I find extremely useful now within the game you can do a real lot with them get a lot of shapes out of them as well that you wouldn't expect before so you can see we've got that little curve going on we could even go with a half block on the side here just to give these engines a little bit more protection so one going there like that and that you see how we're getting some sort of weird droid looking effect that's what we really want and then we also want to add a remote control block and in this case I'm going to add it right on the back here so we've got some way so make sure it's in line and the best way of telling the remote control block is actually aligned is number one turn off symmetry so you can see it and that little top circular bit needs to be facing like that for it to go the way we want so bang and then we can protect that up with some armor always get that remote control block protected so sometimes you, you do forget things but it's the best reason this is why you you're testing you're going through different factors as you're coming across them um, so we're looking for an antenna, there we go, and that can be inserted into the back there as well, not there, and this then should give us a small ship, so I'm hoping it's that one, yeah it's that one, and then we can go to control, and we should have a small ship that can control itself in a very sort of compact nature. You can see that how that drone could now easily be mass produced yes there is some human interaction required and more thrusters would make it more stable so you can see we've got some basic movements and another great thing that we might want to do is add some forward and back thrusters as well so we don't be drifting all over the place let's stick one of them in there it's just a lot of trial and error really and as more and more you get building the more you start understanding 
that the more you try or the more you mess around seeing what goes on, what works, you find spots for things like that. There we go. We built ourselves a little drone. And then all that's really left to do there is get it into a more darker, more menacing type colour. Let's connect up to it again and give it another little test. So we'll go to the remote control block, test it up. And there we go. We've got another scary, intimidating, mass producible drone. Now, to finish these off, there's a few things that we could do here. Say, for instance, we want to connect these to a ship and then deploy them. We can go to the merge blocks, like so. And a slot like that would be absolutely perfect. Now, you could attach that to the hull of a ship. And when you enter into a battle situation, you can just deploy them, set some GPS coordinates as you're flying through, let these guys follow in your footsteps and mop up some of the enemy fighters. Or even you can send them off to attack an enemy base. But that is a very deadly combination. You can see we've got the two missile turrets on either side. And if we do want to remote control this, we'll need one final thing. And it is another thing that a lot of people forget. It is a camera. Like so. So as long as we've got a camera, we've got an antenna. And we've also boosted the antenna range. So go into your control panel. Look at the antenna. Find the antenna. And you can see it's only set to that at the moment. And it's you could extend it to that far if you really wanted it to. But uh, a good a good 100,000 meters should do you well. And then it doesn't use too much of the free reactors that we've got. So there you go. A simple, quite cheap design. We could make this cheaper if you didn't want to have to control it yourself. You could just simply pop off the rocket launching turrets. So one off the top, one off the bottom. Add some extra armor in there. We could even add, uh, let's see if we can fit a laser antenna on there. We could add a laser antenna to the roof if we wanted to try to give it a little bit of a head. But I thought kind of look quite scary without it but you can see what I mean if you don't give something for the eye to turn to it's not scary say for instance if you need to do something like this um, I get spotlight and I add spotlight to the top and then change the color of the spotlight if we can access any of the blocks through here I think access the side of the turret through there go to the control panel find spotlight and then we just turn the spotlight to even just a red like that it just it's it turns it into something that's scary as you can see and there you go we've got ourselves a very simple drone let's change the color up a little bit make it a bit more menacing you could give it a rusty color if we wanted to a brown <laughs> maybe not let's uh find a pink or a purpley classic drone type color and you can see since these guys are only small ships as well it's very easy to build them quickly and now this could be straight out there depending on my little asteroid station from any targets and as soon as its missiles go off I know that someone's in the area and I can begin producing more and more of these guys so there we go that was a little insight into how I build drones it is a lot of trial and error and you will forget things as you're building but that's why you need to keep trying it out before you actually get it into a fight so let's give it one more test flight go into the remote control grab that control Let's have a look at the movement of that. Yeah, so for a drone, that is perfect. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Just a simple little tutorial showing you how you can actually build your drones by yourself. Keep them simple. Keep them compact. And there we go. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.